AI agents are becoming mainstream in how people operate their businesses, improve their workflows, and help with decision making. However, no matter how capable your AI agent workflow is, without a user interface, business won't be able to access the agents. In this tutorial, I will walk you through how to create a simple yet elegant user interface using Gradio, a popular open source front-end UI framework used by many companies and developers. From one of my previous videos, I covered how to use Pedantic Graph to set up an email writer and feedback agents orchestration. If you haven't watched the video, you can find the link in the description below. We are going to recreate the email writer and feedback agents workflow, but with a UI this time. If you have never heard of Gradio before, Gradio is an open source Python framework that makes it easy to create and share machine learning applications with a user-friendly web UI. It allows you to build interactive demos for your models with just a few lines of code, making them accessible through a simple web link without any complex deployment steps. I will be sharing two examples to illustrate two different approaches. The first approach is based on Pydentic Graph Paradigm to generate the output directly. The other approach, which will be a more standard method, we will handle the agent code individually. Both examples will ultimately achieve the same result. It's up to you to decide which approach suits you the best. Anyway, to get started, launch your terminal and run the command pip install pydantic AI Gradio to install the required Python packages. Now launch your code editor, create a Python file and name it loadmodels.py. In the module, set up the AI model object you wish to use. Let's start with the standard approach example first, since it's easier to grasp. Create a Python file and name it email feedback gradio standard.py. In the script, import the Python libraries showing on the screen. Next, set up the input and output data types. Set up the email writer and feedback agents. For the email writer agent, we are going to instruct that the first email must exclude user interests. So that way we can ensure the first email will get rejected and send it back with feedback from the feedback agent. And by setting result type to email object, we can force the output format to be consistent with only email subject and body. Similar setup with feedback agent. For the system prompt, we are just going to keep it brief and specify that email must reference user interest. And for the output type, the agent can return either email requires write object or email OK object based on the review outcome. Create a helper function to format user's data as XML string to make it more organized. To handle the email generation and feedback workflow, create an async function called handle email flow with name, email, and interests parameters. In the function, create the user object first with values from the arguments to load the user's information. Initialize an empty list to store the conversation history between the agents and set the feedback value to none. Now here's the key part. Insert a while loop to continuously orchestrate the email generation and feedback process until the email is finalized. Create the prompt based on if feedback is available. Then update the input fields to show email generation is in progress. When we yield the variables, the values will be populated in the UI. At this step, we'll have the email writer agent to execute the request to generate an email message. Once email draft is created, we will update the UI again with a message draft generated submitting for feedback and pass the user and email object to the feedback agent for reviewing. From the feedback result, which is either an email requires write or an email OK data object, we will check the data object type. If it returns as an email require write object, store the feedback as a variable and update the UI with the feedback detail. And it will return to the beginning of the loop. 
The sleep function here are just to show you the feedback detail in both terminal and UI in case you need to debug an error. Normally, the agents process requests pretty fast. There won't be enough delay to show the feedback detail in the UI. Otherwise, we should expect the output returns as an email OK object. In that case, we can assume that email is approved and update the UI with the finalized email message. The break statement here will exit out the function. That's all we need to do to set up the entire agent workflow. Let's move on to create the UI. If you are new to Gradio, it might look confusing at first. Once you get the hang of the API, it's actually pretty intuitive. Create the main Gradio interface block and let's name it demo. On the top, add a markdown header for the application. Create a row for the input fields to capture user's info. Below the input fields, insert the email subject, email, and feedback fields. Group the feedback field as a separate section. At the bottom, insert the button to trigger the email generation workflow. Connect the button click event to the handle email flow function and map the input components to the function parameters and output components to the function's returns. And the last step is launch the Gradio app. Now let's run the script and give it a test. Enter the information for the input fields and click Generate Email. For the first email draft, the email receives an email is too generic feedback, and it doesn't reference the user's interest. In the backend, the email is pushed back with feedback included to the email writer agent for revision, and this email feedback agent approves the rewrite and email is finalized. That covers everything for the first example. Now, let's learn how to set up the same app using Pydantic Graph approach. Create a Python file and name it email feedback gradio pydantic graph.py. Import the required Python packages. Create the data models and agents, similar to previous example, except we now add a state data type to track the messages, history, and user. The next step is to set up the nodes. Create the right email and feedback nodes. The right email node handles the logic and execution to generate email message. It then pass the email message to the feedback node for reviewing and approval. In the last email, the message history was handled in the handle email flow function. But this time, the message history will be handled by the nodes. In the handle email flow function, the code base is relatively similar. In the while loop, set up the graph object with the nodes, and we are going to call it email graph. You can think the email graph object serves as the container that executes the node workflow. Update the UI to show email is being generated. From email graph, call the run function to execute the workflow. Because Email generation and feedback revision are done inside the email graph. The final output will be an email object with finalized email message. This is what I meant by using the Pydantic graph approach. User won't be able to see the feedback exchange between the agents in the UI. If output is not returning as an email object, then something is off in your node workflow. Update the UI with the final email subject and email body. The UI setup is exactly the same. Nothing needs to be changed. Run the script and give it a test. And that's everything I will be covering in this tutorial. Hopefully, you find the video useful. If there are other things you would like me to cover, leave them in the comments below. Also, if you are a Patreon member, you can download the source code from the link in the description below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Happy coding!
See you in the next one.